How's it going everyone? So today I'm going to talk about lightweights versus heavyweights for fat loss. Before we begin though, please subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't already. I do appreciate the support. It helps my channel grow. Also, if you're interested in online personal training or buying some cool fitness gear, have a look in my description box. So there was a meta-analysis that has been done proving that higher reps and lower reps both reap the exact same rewards for muscle hypertrophy, which is building muscle and maintaining fat loss, as long as the volume is the same. So when volume was kept the same, it didn't matter if the weight was heavy, around 10 repetitions or so, or very light, 30 to 50 repetitions, as long as the volume was the same, muscle growth and fat loss was very similar, you guys. So a great example of this was take the bench press, for example. We have 100 pounds, we do it for 10 repetitions. So we get 1,000 pounds of volume. What we also could do is we could do 50 pounds of the bench press and do it for 20 repetitions. Well, that both of those are equal to 1,000 pounds. Both one used 10 pounds, one or one used 10 reps, one used 20 reps, one used 100 pounds, one used a lighter weight, 50 pounds. So again, as long as the volume is the same, doesn't matter if you're using heavy or lighter weights. So <coughs> Brad Schoenfeld has done his own study, you guys, with trained individuals. So a lot of studies you see it's with people that use beginners that really don't train, they use college students. So all of their gains are coming from beginner gains. Brad Schoenfeld, you guys, he's a PhD, extremely knowledgeable, very knowledgeable man. I highly respect him. Uh, I read a lot of his stuff. Anyways, he has studied muscle hypertrophy extremely um, extensively. So he knows his stuff on muscle hypertrophy. Anyways, he did his own study with trained individuals and he found out that higher versus lighter weights, again, both reap the exact same results. So what should we do, you guys? Um, here's what I would do. I highly recommend training in multiple rep ranges for a period of six to eight weeks. After that time period, I recommend you guys give your body a one week rest, which is basically going to be deconditioning your body. Um, as for the rep ranges, I recommend you guys train in the 15, the 10 and the five rep range. So for two weeks, train in the 15 rep range for another two weeks, train in the 10 rep range for another two weeks, train in the five rep range. After that, you can either decondition your body or do another week or two of doing negatives. Now, this is basically a hypertrophy specific training program, you guys. You can Google it, it's out there. It's an amazing way to train. I love training like this. It's kind of just like doing a uh, mad cows, um, starting strength. It's just when there's 531, it's just a program, you guys. And it's not really set in stone what you can do. It's kind of just um, kind of a standard of how to train a, a training philosophy, if you will. But it's based on getting results from hypertrophy, you guys, building muscle. That's what we want. We want to build muscle. We want big muscles. So that's how I would train. I would vary the rep ranges because if you guys, again, if you're training with 10 reps, you guys are doing it incorrectly. You need to be using multiple rep ranges. So the reason why I recommend training in multiple rep ranges is because our bodies have a mix of type 1, type 2A, and type, 2, type 2B muscle fibers. So what this means is on average, people have about 50% slow twitch muscle fibers and 50% fast twitch muscle fibers um, in most of the muscles that are used for the movements. So type 1 fibers are used for aerobic exercises with a maximum duration use of multiple hours and a very slow contraction time. <coughs> Type 2A are used for long-term anaerobic activities with a moderately fast contraction time. Your type 2B fibers are sh very short-term anaerobic, short-term anaerobic contraction time and very, very fast contraction time. So what does this mean, you guys? What, what, like, what's fast twitch? What's slow twitch? Fast twitch muscles, you guys, respond to low volume, long rest intervals, very high intensity, and pretty low frequency. Slow twitch fibers, in opposition, respond best to high volume, short rest periods, low intensity, and very high frequency. I don't know why the lighting just changed. I do apologize, you guys. Let's see if we can change this. So I'll give you guys an example kind of the different muscles. So your pectoralis major is composed of approximately 60% 
fast twitch, you guys. So we're gonna want to train it like fast twitch, you guys. We we don't <clears throat> we want to train it train it using fast twitch. So very heavy weights, you guys. Smaller amount of repetitions. Again, you can still train in the 15, 10, and five rep range because again we are using low repetitions. We're using five repetitions. We're using 10 repetitions. We're not doing 60, 70 repetitions for our chest. So again, 15 reps is a little bit higher. But again, 60% is fast, the other 40% is slow. So by using 15 reps, you're training the slow twitch muscles as well. Uh, the triceps, for example, are composed of 67% of fast twitch fibers. So what you wanna do is, that's why a lot of people say go heavy or go home. The reason why they say that for your triceps is because your triceps are fast twitch. So you want heavy weight, lower repetitions, longer rest intervals, and a, a, a lower frequency, if you will. You can't train your triceps as often as you can train your rear delts or your biceps. So again, just, what I like to do when I'm training is I like to use a variety of different rep ranges, 15, 10, 5, then I'll do some negatives. This way I get my best bang for the buck. I'm training my slow twitch muscles, I'm training my faster twitch, and then I'm training my extremely fast twitch muscles as well, you guys. And you get full development of the muscles. What you can also do is after you've done a pro the program for eight weeks, you decondition yourself, is you can swap out the exercises as well. So now, guess what? You guys are getting different angles working on the different fibers of your body because believe it or not, there's different fibers to our body. That's why you always hear people recommending train your body with different angles, different exercises, is, that's because your body never adapts and you keep developing the muscle fibers you guys so very important swap out your exercises <clears throat> that's also so your body does not adapt as well if you simply do the bench press over and over and over again yeah you're going to develop some muscle but your gains could have been a little bit better if you did barbell bench press then a dumbbell bench press then maybe a pec fly and then maybe a machine press and just kept utilizing different exercises so end of video thank you guys for watching i do appreciate your support subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like the video share it follow me on instagram dylanberg 999 thanks